when Kane attempted to deliver his usual pre-match taunt on Raw in 2005. <laughs> <Something happened. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you do all that build up. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That's, that's funny, bro. What's good, Joshua Ross? Back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out embarrassing malfunctions in WWE. It's a live show. It's a live event. Sometimes things do go wrong. Sometimes you know certain situations happening, and you know they don't have control over it, so they kind of gotta wing it. So we're gonna check out some of these weird malfunctions in WWE, either by maybe some equipment. Ring equipment, backstage equipment, camera malfunctions, graphic malfunctions, whatever the case may be, we're gonna check it out. Appreciate all love, support y'all showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. Malfunctions that happened in WWE. Number 11, a production blunder is laughed off at WrestleMania 40. It was a common place for WWE commentary team to ignore production blunders under the old regime. <laughs> Vince McMahon evidently believed that if commentators such as Michael Cole ignored the blunder in question, then hopefully the WWE fans watching at home won't realize that anything went wrong. Whilst this is somewhat sound logic, it insults the WWE viewers' intelligence, mm -hmm. and in the new era of WWE, Triple H has allowed his commentators free reign when it comes to discussing botches and blunders. Yeah. This was on full display at WrestleMania 40 when Awesome Truth's graphics were shown for the new catch republic uh -huh. instead of ignoring the production mistake michael cole found great humor in the situation and actually referenced it on commentary this was great to see as everyone watching at home could clearly see the mistake <laughs> it nonsensical for cole to just ignore it number 10 as they should hey man I, we, that's not the awesome truth out there that's actually <laughs> you know just play into it man and the rope snaps no mercy 2002 one of the key parts of the WWE ring is the ring ropes, and before each show, WWE's ring crew must ensure that the ropes are tight and completely safe to wrestle with. Mm -hmm. now, the WWE usually takes this to the next level, as they usually tighten the ropes between matches, but everything went wrong at the 2002 No Mercy pay-per-view. Chris Jericho teamed with Christian to take on Booker T and Goldust, and when Jericho attempted a springboard from the middle rope, the rope completely snapped. Oh. Jericho had an awkward landing, but thankfully he wasn't hurt. Due to the four men involved in the match being incredible in the ring, they were able to put the match back together, yet this was a dangerous malfunction that would yeah. lead to serious questions being asked backstage. Number 9. What is that music? <clears throat> Royal Rumble 2003. The Royal Rumble match is one of the most important matches on the WWE calendar, and the WWE production team has to be on top of the game to ensure mm -hmm. that the show goes smoothly. However, botches can happen at any time. Yeah. The WWE production team made a huge yet comedic blunder at the 2003 installment of the popular event. After Brock Lesnar just won the matchup, an unusual theme song began to play. This wasn't Lesnar's iconic theme, it was instead a theme song for the actual pay-per-view, that being trust companies falling apart. The footage of this error is hard to find, as WWE uh, were yeah. to edit Lesnar's theme song over the track uh -huh. on the future replays and digital releases. Number 8, Randy Orton's extended weight, Royal Rumble 2009. It's well documented that early on during his WWE career, Randy Orton was prone to lashing out, as he legit had anger issues. When Orton <laughs> won the 2009 yeah. Royal Rumble, he was supposed to point to the WrestleMania sign and the pyro would ensue. However, when Orton did this, nothing actually happened. Orton tried multiple times to no avail. <laughs> Orton's <special expression laughs> told the whole story, as Orton was notably seething. Pyro would eventually hit, yet the <laughs> WWE production team was probably met with stern words from Orton once again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is this is Mr. Randy Orton, who was literally listening to the voices in his head and was acting upon them. <laughs> if these motherfuckers don't get my goddamn pyro to go off, I'm going to go back there. I'm going to punt kick every single one of them, including that Bieber fuck looking Kevin Dunn. You're next. I'm gonna punt kick you. <laughs> Came back through the curtain. Due to the moment being embarrassing for both WWE and Randy Orton, they have since edited the footage on the WWE Network, meaning it looks like everything went ahead as planned, but in yeah. reality, this couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> Number seven, wrong match card graphics. 
Oh, well, we Game see that. Graphics usually contain key information such as a wrestler's name and which respective title that they're holding to the ring. Unfortunately, the WWE production team is prone to messing up these match card graphics time and time again. <laughs> the Dakota the guy. One That's of the biggest matches on the show was a match between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura for the WWE title. For some reason, production put AJ as the Universal Champion on the name tag rather than the WWE Champion. Yep. Due to this era taking place at a WrestleMania event, it was a hot topic on social media and probably caused intense anger backstage. What the hell is this? The one was that clash at the castle Scotland when Cody Rhodes came out as WWE Undisputed Champion. Unfortunately, WWE messed up the nameplate as it read talent name and women's tag team Yeah. <laughs> <Champion. laughs> <Another laughs> when did that happen? It came up at WrestleMania 38 as the winner of the annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Mad Cat Moss would appear on the kickoff show and his name card graphic hilariously said that he won the Andrew the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Who is that? Number six, Bobby Lashley falls out of the ring in 2022 live. Andrew. <laughs> everyone in attendance at a WWE house show having access to a camera on their phone, footage of botches at live events are quickly distributed across uh -huh. social media. This is the case in 2002 when the rope snapped while Bobby Lashley yeah, was wrestling at a live event. I remember seeing that. Okay. Lashley would run against the ropes and the rope snap was so sudden that Lashley fell out of the ring and had a truly horrific landing. Yeah. Thankfully, the former WWE champion wasn't hurt in the ordeal and it was possible that due to Lashley's size and strength, the brute force snapped the rope. But this is ultimately a factor that WWE should always consider when tightening the ropes, even for a live event. Mm -hmm. Number five, John Cena's mic issues, WrestleMania 19. WrestleMania 19's pre-show, aka Sunday Night Heat, saw John Cena deliver a trademark rap to get the fans in the mood for the show. As Cena's WrestleMania debut didn't get off to the best of starts, as his mic had continuous problems. As Cena, like the professional he was, pushed through and was able to save the segment. Why WWE didn't test the microphone beforehand is anyone's guess. Yeah. This unintentionally became a test to see how WWE's future top guy could handle the pressure, and he mm -hmm. did incredibly well. Number four, John Cena wins SmackDown 2003. And John Cena picked up the first major win of his career on SmackDown back in 2003. He teamed up with Brock Lesnar to take on Kurt Angle and The Undertaker, and Cena secured the win for his team by pinning Kurt Angle. When Cena pinned Angle, for whatever reason, Angle's theme song began to play. <laughs> there was speculation that maybe Cena and Lesnar weren't supposed to win the match and Angle was supposed to kick out. SmackDown was also taped at this point, and for whatever reason, they didn't edit out the huge production blunder, uh... which led to even more questions. Over two decades on from the blunder, and WWE have since dubbed over Angle's theme with Cena's Word Life theme song. Of course. Is it possible that WWE didn't even notice that they made the mistake initially? It's entirely possible, but during the taped era of SmackDown, they were usually extremely proactive in editing out any botches from either the wrestlers or the production team. Number three, The Shield's new theme, Raw 2014. The Shield had one of the most recognizable theme songs of the past two decades, and it was most recently heard at WrestleMania 40 mm -hmm. when Seth Rollins interfered in Night 2's main event using the celebrated theme. Infamously, back in February of 2014 on an episode of Raw, as The Shield made their way down to the ring, the WWE production team accidentally played the wrong theme song for the trio. Instead of their theme, they came out to the dreaded two. Oh, what? Song. It must have been some kind of joke, and it's clear based on Ambrose's face that he found great humor in the situation. Ambrose That's was set funny. To defend his U.S. title against Mark Henry, <laughs> so this production error was likely playing in his mind throughout the duration of his title defense. WWE were quick to edit the mistake, <laughs> and the footage That's of the original funny. of the Shield's entrance has become extremely difficult to find. Number two, Kane's pyro fail, Raw 2005. One of the main moments of Kane's WWE entrance, I saw him raise his hands above his head, and when he dropped them, Pyro would yeah. then shoot off. As However, it should. when Kane attempted to deliver his usual pre-match taunt on Raw in 2005, <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you do all that build-up... Like, that's that's funny, bro. There's not there's nothing you can do but laugh. Obviously, he can't at the moment, but just when you look back on at it, it's like that's a big part of his entrance, and he just has to sit there. And... What? What happened? <laughs> look absolutely speechless that nothing had occurred. And Kane's partner, Big Show, who was standing in the ring, looked like he was about to break character. As for Kane, he was usually incredibly gifted at staying in character. Yeah. He couldn't even help but offer a smirk. <laughs> Number one, Mr. WrestleMania doesn't get pyro WrestleMania 28. 
Due to the grandiosity of WrestleMania, WWE traditionally go all out with their pyro as they should. Names. At WrestleMania 28, Mr. WrestleMania Shawn Michaels made his way to the ring to referee the end of an era match. Great match, too. And the Undertaker. As HBK delivered his entrance, it came to his usual spot where his yeah. pyro would hit, but for some reason, nothing happened. HBK would just act like this was completely normal. Yeah, which was the best way to handle the yeah, he, yeah, he a definitely did. It occurred two years prior at WrestleMania 26 as a young Kofi Kingston who was set to have his pyro hit during his entrance, and just like HBK, the pyro failed. For Kingston's entrance, the pyro would just hit uh -huh. one single time, but his usual entrance would have the pyro that would go off multiple times. Mm -hmm. This left Kingston looking awkward, yet he managed to move <laughs> past it without drawing too much attention to the WWE production <laughs> It's common knowledge that WrestleMania is rehearsed, and this extends to pyro. So these pyro malfunctions were likely the production team failing to press the correct button in time mm -hmm. or potentially getting their production notes mixed up. But yeah, man, this was a great one, man. <laughs> Something about Kane doing the whole bringing down his hands and the flames come up from the turnbuckles, not landing, not working, and him just sitting there. It's it's hilarious, man. Hilarious. Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestling videos y'all want me to check out. Appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.